Video podcasting is taking over, but you shouldn't neglect audio podcasting either since you get the double dip and grow your reach. So today I want to talk to you about how you can take advantage of StreamYard specifically for podcasting and what I think the perfect beginner workflow looks like. So because StreamYard is simple to use and it's in browser, this is actually going to do most of the heavy lifting when it comes to our overall equipment and our software. Because you can already tweak your audio in terms of processing, echo cancellation, you probably won't have to do a lot of audio editing in post-production for your podcast when it goes to the audio side. So that's the good news about using StreamYard, whether you're doing it live or whether you're doing a local recording. The other thing is that when you have a guest for StreamYard, you can have the local recordings for video and audio and download those different streams so that you can edit and merge them later in your software of choice, whether that's Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, or DaVinci Resolve, or whatever editing software you're using. The key here is that you want good video and you want good audio and you obviously want good lighting. Now you can make this as affordable as you need to. I'm a big fan when it comes to lighting of using aperture lights because I know they're reliable and they have several affordable versions of that. For a lot of people, uh, the 60Ds are going to be more than enough and this is going to be within a lot of people's budget. Or you might even consider the Elgato key lights if you have a little bit of extra money to spend. Now as you can see when it comes to audio, I do like to use the Shure SM7B. In this case, it's the Shure SN7DB because I know it's reliable. And with the DB version, I know I have built-in preamps. And for me, I like to run those directly either into an audio interface like the Rodecaster Pro, or I can use something mobile and portable like the Rode Extremer. That's something that's actually affordable and gives you a lot of options in terms of being able to plug in your video camera and your audio but you can make this as affordable and simple as you need it to be as a beginner. When I'm traveling, I can make this as simple as plugging in a USB-C microphone into my laptop and using something like the Sony ZV-1F, a $400 vlogging camera used as my webcam. If I have multiple cameras and I plug them in USB type C, I can even actually do switching between cameras directly in StreamYard as software so I can have multicam. If I'm doing a remote interview with a guest, I only really need the one camera and just use the best microphone I have available and I can source all of those in StreamYard and then I can put myself and my guest on the screen and I can get a perfectly good interview directly and if I want to record it and edit it in multicam later, because of local recordings, I have that ability. This is something I've done for remote interviews with good friends like Sean Cannell, Pat Flynn, Noah Kagan. So I know that this is a workflow that many of you should be taking advantage of because it's going to take a lot of the heavy lifting off of your plate. When it comes to wanting to do those multi-cam edits, for me, the easiest thing is to use Adobe Premiere Pro. Final Cut and DaVinci are very similar, and I'm just basically going one, two, three, going back and forth between my three different uh, cameras. One probably being both of us on screen, two being me, three being my guest. So as someone's talking, I just go one, two, three, and I edit it that way manually. There are other AI-based software and plugins for Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut Pro that you could use, things like AutoCut, Autopod and Firecut are out there, and those help people who want AI to do the heavy lifting on their multicam. So you can make this even easier. When it comes to things like repurposing your content, you see a lot of people cutting their content into short form, whether that's vertical short form videos or whether it's longer clips done in widescreen. You can actually do that directly in StreamYard and during your recording or your live stream, you can use shortcut B to put bookmarks or markers in place so that you know where you want to revisit that and clip and cut later directly in StreamYard. It's also great for time stamping things. And so this would give you the ability and the control to manually cut down the sections that you want. And then you can either share those directly, or if you want to edit them even further, you can download them and then you could go ahead and edit to your heart's content. Another thing you could do is you can take your entire live stream and you could try and have AI take the wheel here. And for that, I like an AI tool called Opus Clip. I think it's actually one of the better ways to do this with AI and get reasonably good looking 
footage and automated captions and you can tweak and modify it and it picks out some of the better you know areas of your podcast in many cases and your interviews but I also love the fact that I can just do this in StreamYard manually and get exactly only the footage I want. So I feel a lot of times I might have better judgment than AI, but some of you might be crunched for time. And so every now and again, I think it's okay to let AI take the wheel. Now, for those of you who want to upload an audio only podcast and distribute it across Apple, uh, Spotify, and all the other podcast audio platforms, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a podcast host. Now, Spotify does let you upload and distribute for free, so you could always take that approach, or you could use hosting companies like Buzzsprout, Simplecast, or Podcastle. Pick whatever's in your budget and what you think has the analytics that you're going to want and a simple interface you can read. I've used all of these, and I think that they're all perfectly fine. The key here is the distribution. You're gonna to wanna to take the audio from StreamYard that you downloaded, because you can get that as a separate unique audio file. And then you can choose whether or not you want to process and edit that or whether it's good to go as is. A lot of times I might want to tweak or refine that audio. Adobe has a free AI tool, Adobe Audio Enhance for podcast. I find this has been fantastic for me because I actually use decent microphones at cleaning things up. As long as you have at least a $100 microphone, I think that this is going to really be able to get you to studio quality on the audio as long as there were no major issues. If you have to do this manually yourself in a program like Adobe Audition, you're probably going to want to do a few things like denoise, normalize, de-reverb, or adaptive noise reduction. Once you've processed and exported your audio, you can upload it to your podcast host of choice and then distribute it across your podcast platforms of choice. From your host, this is gonna give you probably a link to an RSS feed that then is plugged into all these other platforms and then distributes it. We've actually already done a video about YouTube podcasting that you can check out here on the StreamYard channel. And so if you have a video podcast that you're uploading, we walk you through exactly how to do that step by step and create a podcast playlist there. That'll be linked in the description of this video and most likely in the info card as well. When it comes to podcasting, I think that choosing your content and your formats is very important, whether you're doing a solo podcast, something I tend to do, or you're doing interviews like I do from time to time, you have to decide what type of podcast format you're going to be known for or whether you're going to mix and match your formats. You also want to make sure that you are able to find guests for your podcast pretty regularly if you're doing an interview style show and you'll probably want to put together some type of promotional package and have a process for making clips of them so that it's getting out there and you know you're doing right by your guest and getting as much attention for them as possible. I would also highly recommend you encourage your guests to promote your podcast so that people can find it and so that you can also reach more of their audience. Something StreamYard has built in is its collabs feature. So if you're trying to find guests, you can take advantage of that if you don't know where to start. We've talked about, about local recordings, but do remember you can do your podcast as a live stream. And one of the advantages of that is the ability to get donations during the stream and monetize it that way. It's something that has turned out to be very lucrative. I've actually had great success with it myself, especially on my main YouTube channel. And I think it's something that a lot of people are overlooking in favor of things like ad revenue when directly being supported by your audience can turn out to be much more reliable and lucrative if you're bringing more than enough value for them and you got them emotionally invested in your journey and what you're doing. With these tips and the tools from StreamYard, you should be more than capable of producing a great live stream and finding your audience, the guests that you'd like to have, and continued success. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you're watching the next one here on the screen. Stay awesome, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.